Hello there ladies and gentlemen, today I'm bringing you a shorter video, I'm going to be talking about some champions in Raid Shadow Legends. This is basically going to be a video going over my regrets, uh, champions that I've leveled up that I wish I didn't, and overall just the worst champions I have. So this is going to be good information, especially for newer players, or people who are just looking for a few champions to avoid, so let's get right into it. First champion I'm going to talk about isn't going to be hard to avoid. This is Jizo from the Lizardman faction. Lizardman, whatever you want to say. Um, he is a defensive champion that seems very, very good on paper, especially for the early game. If I remember right, he's actually like a daily login or something like that at the very start. So he's got an aura, increasing attack in all battles. Um, he has the A3, which is 80% uh, chance of placing Provoke, places a heal on himself for one turn. It is a single hitter though, which kind of um, mitigates the usefulness of that skill. A2 is placing a shield and counter attack for two turns on one ally. Um, it grants him an extra turn. The value of the shield is proportional to his defense. A decent shield. Um, and then his A1 is attacking one enemy two times. Uh, the reason that I kind of regret putting so much into this guy is because you're not going to use him outside of early game. When I first started the game, I would see him in so many arena teams, he was being used so much, he seemed so tanky, he was hard to take down, that kind of thing, just because he's a defense-based champion, so I was like, hey, this guy's probably pretty good, I six-starred him, six-star ascension, I put my best gear at the time on him, and I absolutely regret it, don't spend your time or effort on this guy, I think I even have some masteries for him, yeah, a little bit of masteries, nothing crazy though. Don't spend your time or resources on them. Not worth it. Um, this is going to be one of my biggest regrets right alongside the other one here, which is Kalaya. Uh, she's going to be a Barbarian's Epic. Um, I went ahead and got a lot of Masteries for her. Um, a lot of uh, my best gear and everything was on her as well. She is decently useful for early, early game clan boss um, because of this skill here, which is attacking three times at random. Each hit has a 60% chance of a HP burn debuff for two turns. Keep in mind, this is on a five turn cooldown when it's not booked. It's only placing the burn for two turns. It's not that good of a skill. Her A1 30% chance of placing the HP burn debuff for two turns and in her A2 which is almost useless but her AI still uses it against the clan boss is an AoE twice um, with a 50% chance of placing a heal reduction so it's um, or sorry just an AoE I, for some reason I thought this attacked twice but it's just an AoE not that good of a champion. Um, there are other champions that will do this a lot better. There's even somebody like Coffin Smasher, who is a rare that I would say is a better champion. Um, who I use now is Drex because he has chances of placing HP burn when he's attacked. When he's attacking, he hits harder, all that kind of stuff. So again, I six starter, I six star ascension. Um, I regret it. This champion doesn't even make it into my playlist for faction wars. That's how much she isn't used anymore decent early game um epic for the clan boss like i said but don't focus on putting any more than four star um effort into her so don't take her to five stars don't ascend her past four stars nothing like that just leave her at four stars use her while you can you'll get far better champions to use later on in the game moving on to the next champion this next champion might be room for a bit of debate, but this is going to be Shaman from the Orcs faction. Shaman, I believe, is your 7-day login reward, so she's very accessible for players, and that's part of the reason why she gets a lot more love than she deserves, and you can see how many people rate her highly and everything. I'm just gonna say it. She's not that good. She's not bringing that good of a kit. Um, her A1 is attacking one enemy with a 25% chance of removing one buff. Um, A2 is placing a crit rate buff on all allies for two turns, which is okay. Um, it's not the most useful. I'd rather have attack up or defense up, that kind of thing. And then her A3 is just a single target revive on a seven turn cooldown when it's not booked. Um, reviving with 50% of their HP, placing a shield buff. So the shield and everything like that is a decent revive. And she's increasing defense in faction crypts by 23%. So overall, the aura is okay. Um, the revive is just okay. There's so many better champions out there for it though. So even if we come over here, Old Hermit Yorg is going to be a better option for um, reviving I would say it's still on a 7 turn cooldown, it's bringing back 2 allies with 60% HP, 
filling their turn meters by 40% and placing a perfect veil buff on them for two turns. Granted, this is a fairly new champion and revivers are hard to find in the orcs faction, um, but his A2 is also bringing an increased attack. So I'd much rather have that champion over somebody like Shaman. That being said, Shaman still does get used in my Faction Wars team just because finding orcs that are good and that are not legendary or epic if you get very certain pulls is very hard because a lot of the good orc um, members are hiding in the legendary tier. So um, definitely a champion that I wouldn't take past four stars. I don't regret it too much on Shaman just because she's five star. Not a huge loss, that kind of thing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next champion here. Next champion up is going to be somebody that I didn't review very kindly on my champion review, my starter champion review. This is going to be Yaga the Insatiable. Um, I also regret leveling this guy up, but he's going to be one of the worst champions I have. And we'll go over why. Um, so this guy has a 40% chance of a 5% poison on his A1, which is okay. Um, he's going to have 50% of 5% poison on his A2, which is A2 hitter, excuse me. And the A, uh, A3 attacks one enemy damage increased by 25% under targets, un, or sorry, against targets under poison debuffs. Um, this guy's an epic. My poisoner right now for clan boss is Frozen Banshee, who's going to be doing that exact same role as a poisoner, but far, far, far superior because she's putting out more poisons and more um, consistent poisons. So all of his poisons are going to be on a 40 to 50 percent chance when it's not booked um i took this guy to, he's, he's not even fully kitted anymore i've started pulling gear from him um i took him to five stars i ascended him to five stars i regret that don't put that much time and effort into this guy he's okay for early level clan boss just keep him at four stars ascend him to four stars at the most don't waste your time further than that on yaga the insatiable moving on to the next champion the next champion on this list is actually one of my favorite looking champions in the game. This is going to be Frostbringer from the Sacred Order faction. So let's go over her kit a little bit. Um, this is kind of her big money skill here is her A3, the Arctic Winds, which is placing an increased speed and increased attack buff on all allies for two turns. Um, this is a decent skill, I'm not going to lie. Um, I wish it was filling the turn meter by 30% or 15%, something like that, instead of just the increased speed, um, because really the only place that I found use for this champion myself was in the early game arena because of the increased attack, increased speed. Um, she was my uh, my speed lead, not speed lead, but like my speed booster almost in arena for a while when I didn't have anyone better to do that role because I didn't get Apothecary until like a year into the game. <laughs> Um, her A2 is attacking three times at random, placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns if the target has a heal reduction debuff. That is the part that kind of kills her skill set. If she was just placing the decreased defense, that would be fine. This is an epic. She shouldn't have to have the qualifier to be placing the decreased defense since there's um, rare champions that are going to do the exact same thing on a 100% chance as well against everybody in AoE. Absolutely ridiculous that she has that qualifier. Her A1 is attacking two times at random, 15% chance when not booked of placing a 100% heal reduction. Um, so that would be okay for Fire Knights, and then you're getting this decreased defense on them. Um, it is a multi-hitter, something like that would be okay, I suppose, um, but you're not going to be using her past early game. Again, it's a shame. She's a really cool looking champion. She has really cool aura on her when you use her in game, the little frost aura that's coming up from her feet. Overall though, super disappointed. I wish they put a little bit more into this champion. Um, she has a lot of potential. She needs a buff. She's kind of one of those more old school champions that just is overlooked nowadays. Moving on to the next champion. Next champion here is actually going to be another daily login champion, which is what I, or sorry, I didn't review her the kindest in my daily login review either. Um, this is going to be Vizix the Unbowed. Unbowed? Unbowed. Um, this is, like I said, a void legendary defense champion. You would expect big things from her. A1 is attacking two times, 80% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 10%, filling her own turn meter. It's okay. An AoE, 75% chance of placing the small version of decreased speed. Or sorry, I believe that's the big version. I might be wrong about that. Um, let me know down in the comments. Places a shield buff on this champion equal to 20% of their max HP. An okay skill. 
places a provoke debuff on the target for one turn also places an ally protection buff on all allies except as champion for two turns this would be okay if it was an aoe provoke this is a single target provoke on a four turn cooldown a three turn cooldown when it's booked um, this is just not a good skill set for a legendary especially a void legendary this is something um, that needs to be fixed in the void rebalancing we need champions like this to be stronger um, because you know there's just no room for a legendary to be this bad in the game um, this champion doesn't even make it into my faction wars crips at this point she's just not worth your effort don't ascend her past five stars don't level her up to six star don't put your time into her i don't even have her fully kitted anymore she's just not worth the effort moving on to the next champion this next champion is going to be quite a doozy. I'm sure some of you probably seen and hoped that this champion would be on the list. This is going to be Lordly Legionary from the Bannerlord faction. A faction that is already pretty trash and he's just adding to that trash pile. <laughs> so, Lordly Legionary is a daily login reward. I don't remember what day, I just remember that he is. He's an epic. His kit, um, A3 is placing a reflect damage and a continuous heal buff on our allies for two turns this is going to be on a four turn cooldown bellhound a void rare super easy to get is putting reflect damage and a small continuous heal on all allies continuously it's on a two turn cooldown far superior a2 attacks one enemy 75 percent chance of placing decreased speed decreases the target's turn meter by 20 percent if the decreased speed is placed not that important of a skill um, it's not something you're going to be using late game it's not something that's ever going to make it into fire knights 20 unless you're just messing around and you're really bored a1 attacking one enemy two times places an extra hit if he's under a heal reduction places two extra hits if the target's under 100 percent heal reduction so you could possibly try some synergy with this guy placing um hu uh, like with another champion placing huge heal reduction buffs um that way you could try and get the extra hits going in the four hitting a1 to take down that shield overall though this champion is absolutely not worth your time your effort your money or your resources don't put anything into him I don't think I even have Masteries on lock. No, I don't. This guy is just not worth it. It's very disappointing um, that an epic could be this disappointing. Trash, garbage, whatever you want to say in the game. He's just not worth it. Um, although you look at the faction he's from and it kind of starts to make sense. So that's going to conclude the video here today. Um, that's going to be covering some of the champions that I have the most regrets about leveling up. Um, that I don't like, that kind of thing. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know down in the comments if you've used any of these champions. How you feel about them. Or champions that you think should have been on this list but possibly weren't. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Happy raiding to you all and stay safe-ish. Thank <laughs> you.